So chapter 7 here is on coupled climate, uh, still worrying about ocean's role of course in climate variability and change. Um, we already looked at a couple of things on how the atmosphere responds to ocean forcing and we talked about the El Nino paradigm Bjerknes feedback which is actually a coupled variability but we looked at it as uh, Ocean, ocean forcing the atmosphere. So we'll return to some more points about El Nino here, which always serves as a great paradigm for uh, climate variability, most dominant interannual mode of variability, ocean atmosphere interactions. And it turns out that El Nino is also a big part of uh, how uh, ocean will play a role in climate change uh, because uh, as you know the eastern Pacific where the strong upwelling in the east uh, uh, occurs because of Ekman divergence which we learned about uh, is a place where a lot of heat goes into the ocean so if uh, atmospheric res uh, ocean response to global warming is such that the, the cooling uh, is uh, going to be uh, not reduced greatly so that the uh, eastern part warms let's say more slowly than the western part of the tropical pacific then we are likely to continue to take up heat in the ocean which would modulate the uh, global warming greatly in terms of the warming rate of the atmosphere uh, and we will see some details of that when we come to coupled response uh, and ocean's role in the last chapter as well. So the other important thing about understanding coupled climate response is the so-called natural variability. So as long as sun is going north and south and going up and down on a daily time scale and ocean is absorbing heat along the way, we have many modes of variability that we briefly touched on and we will uh, touch on again here. Here. There are an alphabet soup of modes of climate variability in addition to El Nino that uh, are considered natural variability which means even if sun's uh, radiative energy uh, coming in doesn't change these modes will keep occurring because of the uh, ability of the ocean to store the heat and then release it at various time scales remembering that the atmosphere has very uh, low heat capacity and doesn't really have a, a memory uh, at long time scales okay so here is an example of how global warming has happened since uh, about uh, the beginning of the Industrial Revolution and how ocean has warmed and how land has warmed and if you think about uh, the record with five-year smooth uh, uh, signal being removed to highlight only the year-to-year -year variations without the long-term trend so you take these same data you subtract the trend and then you smooth it out so that you can see just what we can interpret as natural variability even though there are interactions between the natural variability and global warming in the sense for example global warming affects the monsoon which is natural variability global warming affects El Nino even though we don't know clearly how the amplitude frequency and duration of El Nino are affected and so on uh, in general we do what is called detection and attribution that we talked about in the first part of this course so I'm not going to go more into it so the null hypothesis the basic most simple uh, concept we can use to say what generates uh, low frequency variability in the coupled system given that the uh, on these time scales we are talking about the sun's forcing radiation forcing is mostly on seasonal time scale and at diurnal time scales sunrise sun up in the regions where you have uh, low enough latitude to have uh, uh, sunshine throughout the year let's say unlike the polar circles uh, what is the null hypothesis so Kla Klaus Hasselmann who won the Nobel Prize in 2021 for physics with Suki Manabe had proposed a, a model way back in the 1970s saying that even though atmosphere is just weather that is changing all the time the ocean uh, and we can consider it uh, as just noise on top of on top of 
the ocean surface, uh, ocean can integrate this noise and keep producing lower frequency variability. So the simple equation was written in terms of temperature change as uh, some random number generator here, let's say, and some damping term. So you can think of it as a flip of a coin or just change in the wind direction or heating and cooling and so on, whatever we talked about in terms of surface forcing, and some damping term which uh, always obviously dissipates heat or let's say takes it away from the atmosphere where the uh, uh, the ocean surface is interacting very closely and there is the heat capacity of the uh, layer which is interacting with the atmosphere which determines um, the rate of change of uh, temperature, surface temperature, right? If ocean inertia or heat capacity goes up, temperature will warm slowly and where it is uh, inertia is slower, layer thickness is thinner, then obviously uh, temperature can uh, warm and cool more rapidly. A fairly simple thing. So how do we think about it? You can think of it as a result of a coin flip experiment uh, where you, uh, as you know, if you flip the coin long enough, it will be completely random so you have over a long uh, num large number of flips uh, you should have an even chance of getting heads or tail but if you keep adding let's say you assign plus one to head and minus one to tail and you keep adding them and look at how this uh, sum, a sum of the flips evolves over time then that is not always zero right so here is flip number one through ten and the result can be random so plus one minus one plus one plus one minus one minus one and so on and when you uh, have uh, these ten flips uh, you can track the mean so one divided by by 1, 1 divided by, uh, so this is minus 1 plus 1 goes to 0, uh, so now you have uh, 1 divided by 3 here, and 1 divided by 4, and so on and so forth. So you are accumulating and pre creating a, think of it as a low frequency rectification of the, the flip of the coin, which is fairly random when you look at individual flips. So the sum also is not zero, so of 10 flips here we end up with minus 2. So ocean does something similar in that uh, the westerly winds and the easterly winds don't exactly cancel out the uh, uh, energy going into the ocean, so the ocean integrates and keeps producing low frequency uh, signal. So you can think of this in cumulative sum of the results results of four sets of one million uh, coin flips uh, giving heads plus one and tails minus one and you can see that uh, in this case uh, the uh, sum uh, and the f number of flips here are showing some low frequency uh, variability in each case and some of them have a randomly long uh, transition from the sum being positive to some being negative and then staying there for a million years and here also it's gone to negative negative but here it's almost zero so even though the coin flip is supposed to be completely random you end up on long time scales the sum being uh, having all kinds of scales of variability you can think of it okay so if you think of this as time and this as temperature where weather is randomly forcing the ocean you can see how many how many uh, time scales you can produce with this simple model. So here think of a spectrum of climate variability like the spectrum of visible light. Okay, The color red is on the low frequency or long wavelength end of the spectrum so we call a climate signal red if it is dominated by a blurring of many slow cycles without the appearance of a single exact period. So you end up with these uh, slopes in the uh, spectrum or the variability or the sum in this case which can be multiple years, multiple decades, sometimes multiple centuries which are completely internally generated by this randomly forced uh, signal, noise forced signal. So in that sense you can think of the noise as being white so that it doesn't have a free, uh, uh, frequency or uh, preferred frequency by itself but when it forces the ocean it's able to produce these low frequencies. Okay. Um, 
In contrast, we refer to climate signal as having a white spectrum if all periods are present like white light which uh, is made up of all the colors simultaneously. So this is the null hypothesis uh, which basically says that we can produce uh, many frequencies in the coupled climate system even when the weather forcing of the ocean is completely uh, like a noise, white noise with no preferred frequencies, but the ocean can integrate it and then can influence the coupled interactions like we talked about the uh, sea surface temperature gradient, pressure gradient, winds and thermocline and so on in the El Nino case. And we mentioned how we don't know exactly um, how the process actually starts. There are many theories but uh, and predictions can be done given uh, certain clues about what the ocean heat content looks like and so on. So prediction and predictability can still be there because ocean has a memory but that doesn't mean we have understood the problem in terms of uh, how the actual trigger happens or whether it needs a trigger. If not, if it is just a sustained oscillation, then what determines the period? Sometimes it can happen uh, in two years, sometimes in seven years. So the amplitude is not that well explained either. Uh, and there also uh, noise may be involved like the westerly wind burst that we mentioned in the case of explaining Kelvin waves and Rossby waves. So. These are a lot of uh, ideas, but the main thing to remember is that the null hypothesis uh, that the weather forcing of the ocean can generate low frequencies and reddening of the spectrum with uh, no uh, specific peak at any particular time scale is a real uh, hypothesis that cannot be easily rejected. Okay, so this we will come back and see is also the case in terms of explaining the uh, modes of variability that we observe. When we have long data series or the so-called reanalysis products which are the blend of models and data, uh, we can find the patterns of variability which we will look at and as we said there is the El Nino but there is also the Indian Ocean Dipole, Atlantic Zonal Mode, Pacific Decadal Oscillation, and Atlant Atlantic Multi-Decadal Oscillation and so on which have certain time scales but we don't always know exactly how they are generated. Okay, So that's always something we have to remember but again if ocean can integrate the noise and produce these time scales then maybe it's just noise producing these lower frequencies okay